Court doesn't get to object, so it will not object. No objection. You know, I think everybody recognizes today that our financial markets are in a big mess. And I've complained for many years about the Federal Reserve System, but I'd have to say that Chairman Bernanke himself is not responsible for this mess. Not that I think he has the answers in this deeply flawed monetary system, but obviously the seeds of this mess have been planted over a long period of time. But it's more a reflection of the system rather than that of one individual. It's amazing how panicky people have been getting and how everybody's wringing their hands and yet, you know, our government tells us, well, there is no recession, so things must be all right. A lot of people are very angry, and yet we know there's something seriously wrong. But with all the mess that we have in the financial markets, and now we see this morning that inflation is roaring back, and yet it is still way below what the private economists are saying about what price inflation is really doing. But the consumer knows all about it. But it seems like around here, whether it's from Treasury or the Federal Reserve or even in the Congress, all we need now is to have a world-class regulator. It's going to solve all our problems. And I think that is so simplistic. From my viewpoint, what we need is a world-class dollar, you know, a dollar that is sound, not a dollar that continues to depreciate, and not a system where we perpetually just resort to inflation and deficit financing to bail out everybody. And this is what we've been doing. And it hasn't been just with this crisis, but ongoing crisis. And we've been able to pull ourselves out of these nosedives quite frequently. One of the worst nosedives with the dollars was in 1979, and we patched it together. But I think the, the handwriting on the wall is there's a limit to how many times we can bail the dollar out because the conditions are so much worse uh, today than, than they have ever, ever been. You know, it, we, we talk a lot about predatory lending, but I see the predatory lending coming from the Federal Reserve, interest uh, at 1% overnight rates, loaning to the banks, encouraging the banks and investors to do the wrong things, causing all the malinvestment. These, these conditions were predicted. They were predicted by the Austrian free market economists. It should surprise nobody. And yet nobody resorts to looking to those individuals who were absolutely right about what was coming and what we should have done. Even as early as seven years ago, I introduced legislation that would have removed the line of credit to the Treasury, which was encouraging the moral hazard and the malinvestment. But here it looks like now we're going to need $300 billion of new appropriations. So we need to look at the monetary system and its basic basic fundamental flaws that exist there, and then we might get to the bottom of these problems we're facing today. And now, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I did want to join uh, the same conclusion. What we need is more value in the money. You know, in terms of, of gold and other commodities, prices aren't really going up. Sometimes they actually even go down. In terms of paper money worldwide, whether it's the euro or the dollar, uh, prices prices are going up. But I maintain really that inflation is a tax and if the Federal Reserve and you as chairman have this authority to increase the money supply arbitrarily, you're probably the, the biggest taxer in the country. You're a bigger taxer than, than the Congress. Because you know they're talking now about a bailout package of three hundred billion dollars and we'll have to raise the national debt to accommodate to take care of the housing crisis. But y you as a Federal Reserve Chairman and the Federal Reserve Board and the system create hundreds of billions of dollars uh, without even uh, appropriation process. But then this money gets circulated and some people benefit. The people who get to use it first benefit. The people who get to use it last suffer the consequence of the higher prices. And so every time people go and they complain about these higher prices, they should say to themselves, I'm paying a tax because whether you're monetizing debt or whatever or catching up for uh, buying up securities, uh, you know, we've had a free ride for all these years. Uh, uh, we've been able to export our inflation. We have the Chinese buying up our securities. We haven't had to monetize it. But now it's coming home and you do. You have to buy these things to prop them up. So I maintain that inflation, as the increase in the supply of money for various reasons, is a tax. It's an unfair tax. It's a regressive tax. It hurts the poor. It hurts the retired people more because labor cost, labor's never goes up 
and keeps up with inflation. We never keep up with the need for the retired individuals to keep up with the cost of living. So I'd like you to comment on this. Is, is this completely off base or is there something really to this? Every time we see the cost of living going up that we indirectly are paying a tax. Congressman, I, I couldn't agree with you more that inflation is a tax and that inflation currently is too high. And it's a, it's a top priority of the Federal Reserve to run a policy that's going to bring inflation to an acceptable level consistent with price stability as we go forward. I would make one distinction, which is that the, what the Federal Reserve can control is the increase in prices on the average over the overall basket of, of consumer goods and services. Um, the enormous jumps in oil prices, other commodity prices, um, are to some extent, at least, due to real factors out of the control of the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve cannot create another barrel of oil. It's the global supply and demand conditions which are affecting those particular things to the most significant extent. But to the extent that the Fed can uh, does have influence on the overall inflation rate, you're absolutely right that it's very important for us to maintain price stability, and I take that very seriously. But if the oil prices were going up for another reason other than monetary reasons, other prices would have to come down because there would be a limit in the money supply. I think the prices are going up today, like I indicated in my opening statement, not necessarily because of the monetary policy of the last year, but maybe for the last 15 or 20 years. And, uh, and the fact that we were able to export, so to speak, our inflation, now it's coming home. I mean, those uh, uh, people who have been holding these dollars are not wanting to buy them as readily. I mean, fortunately, uh, foreign central banks are still not dumping them, but even the other central banks might not be as cooperative. So I still see tremendous pressure. I don't see any signs uh, that you're able to do very much because because all we hear about is more inflation. You, you know, it, it's not so much that uh, uh, they're too, too big to fail. It, it just means that everybody needs propped up. Congress participates in it, and all the pressure is put on the dollar. It's a dollar bubble, and I think what we're seeing is the unraveling of a dollar bubble that had been building for more than 35 years. The gentleman from New York.